something which is a little bit unorthodox. This is Queen Radio. But you know, the good thing about being a queen is that you do whatever you want, you know, on your on your platform. And I do whatever I want on this platform, Tasha. So people thank you. And I'm not a I'm not ashamed to praise God. And a lot of people are ashamed to claim God, worship God, praise God. I'm not. I'm not so sure this is a good thing. The pink Lamborghini just a race to China. What a race to China, just a race in China. Ever since I can remember, we've always had celebrities when they get an award, they come on stage and they would thank God and then go back to performing some song or doing something that is the opposite of the God that they claim to be thanking. And so you see sometimes today, even now, you see some of these uh, rappers or actors or entertainers who will come out and talk about God. The question is, is that a good thing? So my mama sitting right here. I used to sit right beside her, like right here. You know, our brothers and sisters, we had this whole preach to ask them. I, I, I really love the church. Like, he opened up the doors to, like I said, we ain't had nowhere else to go. We actually slip here sometimes. Faith got to be something that you believe. You can't go through the motions. You got to have a goal. You got to speak it into existence. And faith is believing that it's going to happen. Now, this is, the, this is the rapper Glorilla, who, by the way, just recently or has an album where she is collaborating with Kirk Franklin, who we all understand and agree that uh, his representation of Christ seems to be a bit dashed with, you know what, not dashed, but splashed with a lot of the world on top of his his lyrics. And so she is, I guess, trying to tap into that particular side of her or that side of culture. The question is, is it legitimate? Is it genuine? And when you listen to them and we're not necessarily expecting them to be theologians and, and to be and have a PhD and have to be able to explain all the doctrines of Christ. But some things are just basic, right? She said, having faith in faith. Well, what does that mean? It, that's all. That's kind of like buzzword to someone. Yeah, this is my, you know, five minutes of Jesus. Is that dangerous? Well, I think it is. I think it is dangerous. Now, I'm not saying that she's not serious. She's not actually searching. I don't know. But when you look at some of the things that she's done and said and so forth, it just kind of makes you wonder, uh, is this genuine or is this just a show? You must not know what you just thought. Huh? Me and my bitch go on. You what this can do is it can send the wrong signal to people who might be listening, who are trying to figure things out themselves. And so what does Paul say? Paul says that I urge in Romans 12, he says, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. Not the way that we see some of them presenting their bodies, but in a way to where they are giving themselves over to God. He says, this is your spiritual service or your reasonable service. This is the least you can do. Verse two, he says, and do not be conformed to this word world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may be, may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. But notice he says, and be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that indeed, if your mind is being renewed, if you are indeed a believer, then be transformed. Don't be like the world. You cannot be this way and that way. Which way are you? How does light fellowship with darkness? Well, it can't. Look, I need a heart. I need a thief. Now that was Cardi B. I can't play the lyrics of everything that she's saying, but she's made some pretty made some pretty vulgar statements, and she's got a song. Just the title is pretty vulgar. I won't even cover that. But she is without question an over sexualized person. I won't speak to whether uh, you think that she has talent or not, but. What she's doing is she's showing off the thing that she thinks is the most important, uh, which is her body and, and the lyrics that she says that are really suggestive. Well, wouldn't it be good if this person could come to Christ? Well, obviously that would be good. And then instead of giving us the songs that she's been giving, give us something different, give the world something different. Well, she's not changing her songs, her lyrics, but on, on the side, behind the scenes, I guess, she's making statements about God. I don't know, maybe God is working in her. I hope that's the case. Uh, and so is this genuine? Does it help? Does it hurt? It really, really does. And I'm giving y'all the word because I, if y'all have read the Bible, God, I forgot his name, but he always used to give messages to one of his, one of his, one of his prophets. And 
I feel like I might just be one of his prophets, bro. Like, because he just be sending me messages and it's just like, I have a big platform. So I always want to remind ya. Okay, so now the problem is though, what does she say that she feels like that she might be one of God's prophets? Well, no, you're not one of his prophets. And the issue is you do have this big platform, but if you're sending mixed messages, that's going to be the problem. Here's what Jesus says about this. He says, and this kind of goes for her and anyone else. You don't have to be a, a star or an entertainer for this to apply to you, but this applies to anyone else. He says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot be just be devoted to, let's say, this career in this vulgar rap that you're putting out and also at the same time be devoted to Christ. He says you cannot serve God and wealth or God and men. You cannot serve the world and the things of the world. You cannot serve money, financial rewards and gains and serve God at the same time. That means that you can't have those things, um, but one should not come at the expense of the other. In other words, uh, God should or money should not come at the expense of God. If you happen to serve the Lord and you do happen to make money in doing so or irrespective, that's fine. But if you're sending out two different messages, which is what she's doing, that's not a problem. And you convey this to other people that it's OK to be worldly. But then at the same time, as long as you have a little bit of God to kind of come back to, especially when things are going bad, you know what? Yeah, let me go ahead and pray. All right, I'm good. That's all I needed. And give yourself a couple of Hail Marys, cross your, cross your, uh, give a little cross sign. That's not good. That's not what God's looking for. As a matter of fact, that's the wrong sort of message. That he is real. He is real. This man is really real. He is really above us, creating miracles every single day. And she's, she's telling the truth, but I don't think that the one that she's speaking of that she actually knows. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But again, what will happen is if she really believes that, then other messages that she promotes, other songs, those will change. I got to give you some words of God because that's what God wants you to do. God wants you to promote him. Like God wants you to love him. God wants you to spread the message. Like God is a blessing to my life. So I know that God wants like to share him to the world. Now, this is one thing that you always hear from these people that they, that God has blessed them in that way. Now, let's just be clear. God has not is not the one that's behind your blessing if it's come from some sort of sinister or ungodly means, meaning that you're promoting certain lyrics, certain songs, certain videos, certain things that women and men should not do. You're promoting that. Well, guess what? God is not the one behind that. God is not the one that's blessing you. That'd be like the Pharisees or uh, even someone who is serving Baal. That would be like them giving all the credit and glory to God. No, no, no. You're going to deal with God. And I can promise you, he's going to tell you, let you know for sure. That wasn't him. That was you succumbing to the world. That was you fulfilling the desires of us. As a matter of fact, we're told this. He says, do not love the world, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the things that we see some of these guys doing. Uh, if you do that, if you love that, then the love of the Father is not in him. And, what, and he goes on and tells us what love the, of the world looks like. He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. You, if you love the world, you will find yourself in hell. I don't care how sincere you sound. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so fortunate and so blessed. And I know that my mom always told me that my grandmother was in the church lighting candles and praying for her. I am a result of my grandmother's prayers. And my mother prays for me all the time. And I pray for my daughter all the time. And Church girls acting loose, bad girl, that does not let it go, girl. It doesn't matter how sincere you get. If you tear up, it doesn't matter. There are some people that will have some sincerely held beliefs and go to hell. Even being sincere and thinking that they're serving God. Remember, Jesus makes a statement in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, he even goes on to say that these people have done some things that may have benefited other people in the kingdom. But ultimately what he says, he says, you've done all these wonderful things, cast out demons, done all these, these wonderful things in my name. And then what will he say? 
I never knew you. And oh, by the way, he also throws in there, you who are practicing lawlessness, you who are doing these evil deeds. I have never known you, even though you felt genuine. It doesn't matter. 60 days. Wore white. Abstained from mirrors. Abstained from sex. I levitated. Went to the basement. Confessed my sins and was baptized in a river. Got on my knees and said amen and said I mean. I whipped my own back and asked for dominion at your feet. I crossed myself and thought I saw the devil. I grew thick in skin on my feet. I bathed in bleach and plugged my menses with pages from the holy book. I bathed in bleach and plugged my menses with pages from the holy book. I bathed in bleach and plugged my menses with pages from the holy book. So you can't give these different messages, these mixed signals. You cannot do that. Um, I don't care who you are. I don't care um, what you think. I don't care how you were brought up. God is not changing or acquiescing to the way you want to do things. You have to serve him, as he says, with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Put it all into him. But if you are divided, your loyalties, your allegiance is divided between the world and God. Well, guess who's the one that's actually winning and the one that's losing out? God is losing out. The world is winning. Not that he's actually losing out, but in terms of in your life, God is not present, though you think. It's like putting, it's like putting a poster of your favorite uh, football player, basketball player, entertainer, uh, and thinking that he's literally in the room with you. No, it's a poster, and that's all you're doing. You're putting up an image, a facade, a front of you having the Lord, but he's really not there with you. Why am I alive? Why am I protected? Why did I become the richest black man of all time? Like, why, how did that happen? When you When you see yourself having success and you think that, it's because of God you begin to see yourself as invincible, that God is behind these things. God is the one blessing me. And you convince yourself of those things. But that clearly isn't the case, especially with someone like Kanye. And the more and more I lean into God and work for God, the more wins God is going to bestow on our team, on Jesus Gang. Not realizing who the God of this world is, that's really who you're leaning into. And we know that because of the things that you've said um, before, during, and after, whatever sort of metamorphosis he's gone through. I am a God. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a God. I just told you, that's who I think I am. No, you're not a God. I had plastic surgery because I was trying to look good for y'all. I got liposuction because I didn't want y'all to call me fat. Yeah, there's some things going on there. And the problem was at that time when he was at different churches and putting on, having, having his own little choir, uh, we were saying, people were saying, listen, there's just something wrong with that because how he's presenting himself, how he's living his life and what he's doing and shame on the churches that would put them up. Hey, everybody, come on, let's welcome Mr. Kanye West today. Awesome to have you. All right, guys, y'all can be seated. And here is the problem. You've got people like uh, the Joel Osteens who are kind of this candy coated Christianity that, that they have where they have no standards. And the problem is you, in, you introduce to the world people who are searching that you can be a Christian without any standards. And that is a problem. The Bible tells us this, and this applies in so many fashions. Uh, he says, uh, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regards to its lust. In other words, don't do things that can also lead to sin, lustful things, things of the world. And so when you bring in someone who has a duplicitous message, someone who says, Jesus, 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 but then go live for the world. Well, you're putting on your you are making a provision for the flesh, making a provision for sin. And therein lies a problem. This is more dangerous than a person who is not having a semblance of Jesus. Why? Because the person who isn't even thinking about Jesus or promoting Jesus, that person doesn't have a false assurance. This other person is low to sleep. The other person can be warned. This person, if you tell them about Jesus, they will say, well, I already have Jesus. The other person doesn't have Jesus. They're more inclined. If they are uh, going to listen, they're more inclined to think that, yeah, I've got a ways to go. I'm not there because they have repented. This person feels as though they have repented, though they haven't. This person feels like they're okay, though they're not. This person feels like they don't need a physician, though they do. 
And that's the problem. Neither are in an enviable position. One thinks that he does have Christ and he doesn't. The other one doesn't think that he doesn't have Christ and he doesn't. The problem is one is at least uh, living a true life because this person doesn't have Christ and doesn't know it and knows he doesn't have Christ. That person is easier to come to Christ than the person who doesn't. We're given this story about this woman who is at Simon, not the not uh, Simon Peter's house, but a Pharisee's house. And he's looking at this woman who is clearly, uh, as he says, one who has a lot of sin. She's even acknowledged that. And he gives a story about the person who will love um, much, the one who was forgiven much or the one who wasn't forgiven much. And he says that this woman, has, she knows she's been forgiven much, which is why she loves much. But you, his point to, to Simon, you don't love that much because you don't think that you have been forgiven much because you didn't need to be forgiven that much. That's the danger of these celebrities, these people who give these two different pictures. You can be in the world and be in Christ. No, you cannot. And they are literally going to pay with their lives if they don't come around. And the problem is they are going to convince others that what they're doing and that lifestyle is OK. Sin all you want. Just throw a little Jesus on top and you'll be OK. No, no. You're going to have to pay for that. Mm -hmm.